for the industrial microbiology. So in this video, we will discuss about the various fermentation system as we discussed in the previous video that fermentation system to know the fermentation system it is important for uh, to know about the bacterial growth curve so we have came across about that concept the bacterial growth curve typical bacterial growth pattern of the microbes we know so as uh, again for the same things that uh, for microbes here we are discussing about the bacteria and fungi fungi so as also we mentioned in the previous video growth means actually the increase in number of cells and number of biomass so increase in biomass means chunk of the bacterial cell actually indicates the growth of the bacteria culture so Fermentation systems, as we discussed in the previous video, is actually you have a reactant, you will get a product by some bacterial culture. That is all the fermentation system and is important for the industrial scale, industrial applications of the microbiology. So, so fermentation system has three procedures normally people follow in industrial scale. One is batch culture, next one is feed batch culture, and next one is continuous culture. So this is the evolution like this best culture to feed batch culture and then has came continuous culture. Obviously you can understand batch culture has some disadvantage. That's why people used feed batch culture and now the mundanely used in the strong large scale people use the continuous culture for large scale production of some product like alcoholic uh, products or alcoholic beverage uh, productions in the large industrial scale, scale we will use the continuous culture so just take a look uh, for first to introduce in the batch culture and feed batch and continuous the substrate addition in the batch culture is actually once and a product extraction also you you extract the product for once in the batch culture but feed batch culture, you add the substrate for multiple times, but extraction of the product, you have remained once. Because continuous culture, you add substrate and extract the product. Add substrate and extract the product. Add substrate and extract the product. So this happened like this. So continuous culture, multiple times you add the substrate and multiple times you add, uh, you extract the product. So uh, for understanding, you can think that you have a bacterial growth curve, lag phase, lock phase, stationary phase, and the death phase. So for industrial scale application is important as we discussed the lock phase, that is exponential phase. To, we, are, we want to enlarge the time scale of the lock phase or the uh, exponential growth phase. So to do that, the normal procedure happens uh, in batch culture, you give the nutrient once, you have the bacteria in culture medium you give the nutrient once and then you extract the product once but continuous culture you give uh, the nutrient and extract the product give the nutrient and extract the product. so what happens that time what is the uniqueness of continuous than the batch culture we will discuss in the next in the next so let me turn out the page so we will start from here We will start from here. So this is the uh, typical picture of a continuous culture and a batch culture. Uh, as you can understand that continuous in, in batch culture, that is the preliminary, the, the primary culture people used in, in, uh, in ancestral in time, uh, in the older times, that is actually you have a culture flux you have a culture medium you media where you have the bacteria biomass you have added the buffer and the nutrient once inside the culture media and now you are adding air inside and also there is a procedure to air outside so the air will be go inside and uh, the bacteria culture here it is the bacteria culture there is a air sparger to increase that is it's rotate and it will uh, increase the efficiency of the aeration because as you know to uh, to grow bacteria it needs the aeration so inside the culture media you will have 
uh, the culture inside the culture flux, you have culture media, you have the bacteria. You added the addition uh, buffer or nutrients once, and then after the reactions complete, let's say you have allowed it to stay for one day or two day. After that, you have extracted. You have to extract the product once. So you will get the product once upon a time, not in continuous manner. But in continuous manner, what uh, this is the usual, this is the typical instrumentation people use that is called chemostat for continuous culture. So that is like that. Uh, you have a buffer, you have a nutrient chamber or buffer chamber where you can control the addition in a continuous manner of the nutrient. You hear the uniqueness of this continuous manner or continuous culture is that <clears throat> you will have to continuously add nutrients in a very small volume continuously in the time. So controlling the constant rate of the nutrient supply is the main things of the continuous culture. You also have a sterile control filter for aerations. This is inlet for the air agitations because air is needed for efficiency of aerations. Bacteria growth chamber. This is the bacteria growth chamber. And you, have, you will have a bacterial inoculation mouth or air outlet. Now you have a specific also unique for, uh, as compared to the batch culture that you will have an outlet where you can continuously extract your product by a siphon actions. So whenever you, ha you have got the product, you will be extracted by the, you will be extracted the product at that time by the siphon actions. So now we will discuss about the main difference about the continuous culture and batch culture. Uh, what people you what people ask for various competitive exams or and very uh, board exams. So first to take the batch culture. Batch culture. Now in batch culture, what is the advantage of batch culture? Batch culture has also some advantage and has also some disadvantage. So batch culture is actually simple, easy to operate because there is no uh, the high fi instrumentation like chemostat as you have seen. The types of vessel once used can be used for different process for different times because because you have you have used the one spot for a bacterial culture one one liter beaker you have taken you just wash it for after extracting the product and then you can use it for the next times. If accidentally one batch can be contaminated, then there is no uh, point to loss any product because you will loss only the product for that, that container. But other three, let's say you have put four container together for the batch culture. So one container has been contaminated, but other three has been as it is. So you will get the good, product, good yield and good uh, quality of product from uh, other three. So the level of the nutrients drop, which can create a uh, conditions necessary to reproduce the secondary metabolite. As you know, this is batch culture. You have once add the uh, nutrient. So once the lock phase over, stationary phase, uh, pretty many stationary phase over, there is no nutrient. So when there is no nutrient, then uh, bacterial culture will actually, for the defense mechanism, will produce secondary metabolite, that is penicillin, uh, for example. So this is used, actually, the pen secondary metabolite is, you know, uh, very important for the uh, pharmaceutical or drug discovery uh, research. So this is used. So the batch culture is actually used for that type of industry where secondary metabolite is their main requirement. So used for the productions of alcoholic beverage, alcoholic beverage and organic acids. So now the next disadvantage we have to think about that variability of the product of the quantity and quality can happen in this batch culture. You have one batch, you have one pot, another pot, another pot. So these three pots may not get the same amount. Let's say one ml difference you can, you have mistakenly you have mistakenly done. So then variability of the product in quantity and quality will be formed in different batch. Several different upstream events you have to do, like sterilization of the container before starting the reaction, sterilize the substrate, inoculation of the bacteria. As you know, if you have done any reactions or any if you have any experience in the bacteria, then you know for cell culture, bacteria and the mammal, and also you have to do various sterilization process. So downstream is associated with that process. Now we will go for continuous culture. For continuous culture, you know. 
the advantage is actually you know it can be carried out on smaller vessel and high yield can be obtained because there is no actual there is no volume evolutions of secondary or primary metab secondary metaboli so they, here our target is to maintain the culture in the lock phase in the exponential growth throughout the process if we can uh, maintain the bacterial growth curve in the log phase, we will get the bacteria intact, bacteria, a very large amount of bacterial biomass. So that is happening in the continuous culture. It can be carried out in a smaller vessel, hence high yields can be obtained. High productivity of the biomass and intra and extracellular enzyme is more effective. But disadvantage, it have also the disadvantage because higher chance of contamination. It is not our bad, bad, not like batch culture that you have once contaminated in a one vessel, you can get the fine product for other two batch. That's not for the continuous culture. If one contamination happen, then you will get, it will be total mashed out. But it's complex process and expensive because, you know, you, you have to take out a hi-fi instrumentation for bad continuous culture. Okay, so now we will compare the continuous culture and the batch culture. Um, so, actually, continuous culture keep growing and keep culture growing indefinitely. And given that the continuous supply of the fresh nutrients and removal of the waste product. Okay, now but batch culture total nutrient is added together. So first, the uh, it's allowed to grow the bacteria in the stationary phase or so just after the stationary phase, where toxic product start to accumulate, like the secondary metabolite starts to accumulate, may create unfavorable for organisms to survive. That's why the yield of the product is less for the batch culture. Okay, this is necessary when primary metabolite is the micro or the microorganisms are a requirement product for the industry. So uh, continuous culture happens where the primary metabolite is the requirement for the industry. But back to batch culture happens where the secondary metabolite is the requirement of the industry. To maintain a fixed volume, fixed flow rate, fixed dilution, we have shown that chemostat, uh, uh, a typical instrument people used chemostat. So in continuous culture, mechan microorganism is grown in the controlled way in limited supply of nutrient. So throughout the process, control amount of nutrient supply nutrient is supplied. But batch culture, especially helpful for small culture industry, like where you have to uh, get a secondary metabolite, but not in large scale industry. So 